not a whole lot of priority on it so uh, compared to the boots so i'll be interested to see that matchup we go into the bands we're on demon island for game number one yeah looking forward to this man there's a, there's a very big difference here in stat line we're seeing between these two characters i mean tezka coming in with some incredibly strong stats viewed by a lot of the community as a very very optimal being Three, that Eight strength with this strength starts, four decks, five speed, five defense. Very, very balanced. Meanwhile, Lin Fei, very low strength, very low defense. And Kuichibu obviously running the nine deck starts to have almost unpunishable play on those guitars. So that low defense oh. is going to make it a bit tough for him against a high strength character. However, we've seen him oh, do. Oh, Luna's gone already. Like, nearly 30 seconds in, and Kuichibu's guitars are already building up a lot of damage man managing to get a dodge read or two and then that down sig spike just dunking on luna and sending him down there there goes a stock to the good for goichibu incredible coming out here 25 seconds needed one stock taken and out luna on to the gauntlets but goichibu was just styling out on these guitars and are going for all of the dirty plays finds the true combo doesn't find the end sig out of it but still He's already done a decent bit of damage onto this stock. Of he can lose this first stock and be comfortable with oh the lead. The main oh, will the secure again. that. The ground pound coming in. We've seen Guichi Boots be so accurate with the pinpoint precision on that D-Sig on the Katars, but just for once doesn't land it, and Luna is immediately there to punish. Yeah, yeah I mean, he, he got it before, and he thought, you know what? I, I may as well try it again, see if it works. Oh, no, the weapon throw after the neutral light, and it's... An entire stock lead for Goichibu, untouched on this second stock. Luna's already on his last. The, the, this, the, Luna's been throwing out a lot of the signatures, especially that side signature, and Goichibu just seems ready for it, like, every single time. Goichibu managing to punish it, he, get, he catches the dodge reads, and he's basically just keeping Luna up in the air and in a place where he's not able to control his opponent. However, oh, saying that, I Luna try to go for the huge GC side signature after pushing Goichibu out to the side, but it's end up being yeah. him and Edge Garden another down sink from Goichibu and Luna's gone game one goes to Goichibu oh my god what was that two for three on those on those d sigs by Goichibu in that game one that level of precision is is kind of unheard of I mean that's 66 percent accuracy on one sig no one else really does that to be honest and I mean that was a dominant showing by Goichibu in that first game Luna I think is going to be stepping out for a second um to uh to restart his game but man that was just i mean that game lasted what one minute 40 that was an incredibly brief match and that was all thanks i think to both players just trying to play a really really aggressive game guichibu was playing a very punish heavy game he was waiting out you said with those signatures he was prepared for the, the space around those sigs so consistently and in the moment he found a chance for a punish he capitalized hard and we saw especially the moment he took luna off stage almost every time he held advantage so so well and i think that is one of the biggest issues we're seeing with boots obviously this being the first chance for players to play boots in a tournament environment boots they have a very lopsided shift of power scenarios and weakness scenarios and one of their biggest weaknesses is taking back stage control because the recovery on boots is very slow it has very little momentum carried out of the move so getting back on stage if you overcommit, which, to to be honest, Luna can sometimes have a habit of doing, is really punishable, especially for a player who's as accurate as Guichibu. As we head into game two here, I, I noticed Luna almost immediately getting rid of Demon Island after dying to two down signatures on those katars from goichibu he's like yeah okay the the wall there way too small i'm just gonna get hit with that every time so we've opted for a map that is that has a little bit of a larger wall so he's able to hang down lower especially when he's getting edge guarded but right now it doesn't look like he has to has the need to be edge guarded he's built built up a little bit of damage with the boots already goichibu throwing away the throwing away the cannon now picking up the katars luna trying to make his way back Goichibu getting punished, trying to go for that jump read on the Sair. 
Nice down light into the nair from Ooh. from Luna trying to go for the neutral signature. The down air is that going to be enough? No. Oh, what the throw just saved himself in time. He threw it up preemptively. Side signature on the cannon now. Luna gonna have to try and get away from this edge guard situation. Down sig comes out from the cannon as well as the side sig. Weapon throw trying to go for the GC. Gets punished for it. First stock to Luna. The e emote comes out as well. Luna feeling a bit more confident at the start of this game number two. And a whole minute needed for that first KO. And guys into Grichabu needing less than half a minute for that first stock. But now we're seeing a bit more punishing coming out of Luna. He goes for the end sig. Doesn't manage to find it. Grichabu needs to close out this first stock and the side sig will secure it now minimal damage taken on the second stock a good swift cleanup and over onto the katars yeah now it's uh we're seeing luna on the gauntlets we've seen his gauntlets work out before you know pl obviously playing caspian in bcx getting third with oh, it he's the pound just takes it out entirely and now we're having an another emote from Luna. We're having the same story, but it's just in reverse. It's now an entire stock lead for Luna as he gets taken off stage by Goichibu and then sends him back with a recovery. Goichibu building up a lot of damage on these Katars already. Down air into the neutral light. Try to find a dodge read. Can't quite find it out just yet. Oh, side signature there from Goichibu sending Luna out. Tries to go for the ground pound. Luna, uh, maybe try to go for the punish for it. He does make his way back with a nice and air into the recovery. Side signature ends up dodging into it and Goichibu, he does have a chance here to make it 2-0. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, multiple times in this game, Luna has taken a sizable lead, and Guichabu seems to be really comfortable in this in playing from behind him, making these comebacks. And now all of a sudden, the damage and stocks are fully equal here. We're seeing an equal fitting game, both players playing in neutral, and currently Luna is the one without a weapon. Guichabu trying to take advantage here. Luna does manage to find the weapon for and get onto those boots, but will take damage for it in the process. Guichabu dancing around, just throwing out these moves, backdashing every time he whiffs. Just trying to avoid that punishment because we know boots have so many true combos. Oh, no, 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 punish, but he's just too pinpoint precise. Two nil for Goichibu, this Lin Fei pick. The level 100 really working out. And Luna has to find something here. And there's the swap. He's gotten rid of the battle boots. They're not working for him. We are swapping over to the Tai Lung, which mimics the abilities of Mordax. Whoa, this is going to be a good one, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I mean, this is the character I think Luna is known best for at this point. Initially, in his, his big rise to uh, relevance, it was the Terros. But since then, with the nerfs on heavier weapons, he started moving towards the Tylung, the Mordex, and found a lot of success with the character. Recently, though, he's been on some different picks. We've seen him on the Caspian. We even saw him on the Lin Fei for a few community tournaments and in the ranked queue. But the Mordex has never really left his side as a strong pocket pick. And right here, right now, we're waiting on the map banning to go through. But I'm, I'm interested in seeing how he's going to be playing out on this Mordex. Because the Gauntlets, I'll, I'll argue that they were very high momentum in that last game. But... Ooh, switch oh. off, actually. It's a diamond head. The he's he's gonna, got... It's gonna come here. I mean, I mean the, the Qatar mirror match, and you're going against someone with a level 100 Qatar legend. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna question Luna. He's one of the best players in the world for a reason. Uh, I mean, the Caspian got him as far as it did in, uh, in BCX itself. So, I mean, here's to hoping that it might work out for him and in his favor to put himself into Grand Finals. But right now, Goichibu is the one ahead. He's 2-0 up in the set. He only needs to take one more game to push himself ahead into that Grand final spot and to send Luna down into the loser's side of the bracket. And map bands at the moment coming out. It's going to be Brawlhaven Apocalypse or Small Fortress of Lions. And it is Goichibu's choice here. Yeah, I mean, we're currently facing a, a bit of a small technical issue with the stream, but like you said, that, that Katar's mirror match is a really, really ballsy play for Luna to bring out here. I mean, we've seen the Diamond Head, we've seen the Caspian. It's a pick he brought out at BCX, no less. But 
in a situation where you're facing an opponent who clearly has so much experience on the Katars, I'd argue the Katars are creature with stronger weapon of the two either way. And when you're facing an opponent like that, matchup difference is much less prevalent, obviously, because one of each of your weapons are the same. And then in that situation, it's entirely down to who has more experience. And I mean, by numbers, it's Guichibu. So Luna has to have a lot of confidence, especially in his Katars, going into this game if he wants to try and take it over Guichibu. And again, he's down 0-2 against Guichibu, who... Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm fairly certain he recently came back from a large hiatus from the game. And Luna is coming off the, the, the tail end of a third place placement in BCX ones. And regardless, Guichibu is honestly really, really outpacing Luna here. Yeah, it's it's yeah, I I'm noticing that a lot as well. Guichibu just managing to just almost rush down Luna and not give him much of a chance i mean we saw it in in game two luna had a giant advantage he had an entire stock advantage and goichibu was the one that was able to bring it back you know obviously it's it's just really interesting at the moment two two players it's just it's tense it's really tense that's all it is at the moment uh just doing obviously a couple lobby stuff at the moment just a little bit of technical issues here. It's really... I mean, I'm... I don't know what to say here when it comes... When it comes to what Goichibu has pulled off in the first two games. If he... If he just has to pull it off once more. That's... That's all it is. He just has to pull it off once more. Yeah, for sure. I mean... It is that mentality that's going to be bringing him home in this. If he can... If he can make it work... It's that one more mentality. I mean, I think the the epitome of, of us seeing that in a tournament space is, if anyone is aware of um of the, the post game interview at BCX after Boomy and Snowy won BCX in twos, it's it's a far cry from this this match, obviously. But he was asked, Boomy was asked what he was saying to his teammate during the entire tournament, and he was count, he said he was counting down the matches until they became champions, and that mentality. I think is a very, very strong buffer in how well you're going to play in a tournament set. If you focus only on the distance, you have to close until you reach your goal, which for everyone is is winning the tournament. All of those outside thoughts of what happens if I if I drop a game, what happens if I drop a set, what happens if I if I go into a, a, a losing situation this next game, that leaves your mind if you're just focusing down on that one single situation. So I think if you're Gucci, you've got to focus on the fact you're 2-0 up. You have so much room to work with. To lose this, you have to lose three games in a row, which you've already won two. So he has a lot of space to work with. And now getting into the map banning for this game number three. We're going to be leaving out Small Brawlhaven, Apocalypse, and Small Fortress of Lions. Luna choosing to get rid of the more platform heavy maps of the game. Obviously, Apocalypse and Small Fortress of Lions still having one platform each. However, they are much less intrusive into the gameplay than stages such as Miami Dome or Small Enigma. So going here, we're going to be going to Apocalypse for game number three. A run back of the map of the previous game. And obviously, Luna now switching three, over to the Caspian two, and Guichibu, unsurprisingly sticking with the Lin Fei. Alrighty, game number three, Guichibu. It's underway. Goichibu having the two-game advantage. Ca the Caspian or the Diamond Head for Luna already looking in a little bit of trouble. <gasps> does get the uh -oh. gift though. Another neutral land. No, Goichibu does touch just in time. Both of them off the stage trying to, trying to chase each other. There's a down signature. Luna finally able to get the punish on it instead this time. Goichibu looked like he was going for another down signature, but no, he's just standing in the zone. Luna is already aware of that down and Luna is he he has a stock he has a stock now he just has to keep the push I think it's possible that Luna may have heard us talking about the confidence needed to win that Qatar's mirror match because he really just showed up and and did work in that Qatar mirror match in that first uh, that first stop but regardless we turn now over onto the cannon here at risk of being gimped again, though. These guitars off stage by Luna are just doing so much work. The dare into the end sig, though. Guichibu has Luna disarmed, finds the end light, finds oh, no, the dodge, and he's not into a cover. That's going to be enough to KO. That's really surprising. Apocalypse having a really high kill ceiling. And obviously, with 
Lin Fei having such low damage, and Katars not being the best uh, tool in the kit when it comes to being able to get the knockouts. Mm -hmm. That recovery being able to KO is really surprising. Guichabu trying to send Luna way off stage. He does make it back with a double recovery. A down air picks up the dodge, neutral light recovery. That is confirmed with when it comes to Katars. If they don't have a dodge, neutral air, second one, try to go for the weapon throw. Guichabu doesn't, just touches just then, but didn't on the first attempt. Luna now, without a weapon, he's gonna have to try and work his way around. Not able to punish any of these signatures that Guichabu has been throwing out. Now, trying to throw away the weapon again. Try to pick up the Katars, the neutral signature there from Luna onto the Gaulets. Now Gawichabu on the on the Katars itself. Neutral light again. Can't find the dodge read again though. Oh Luna try to go for the read, the Haymaker! From Gawichabu throwing the cannon up. Hope in attempts to try and hit Luna. Side air pushes Gawichabu on stage. There's a recovery from Gawichabu. The oh, neutral air that's that's gonna No! <gasps> oh my goodness gracious me! What what on earth just happened? I was gonna say they're really going blow for blow in this game, and if that isn't a, a pure, the purest example of blow for blow, Luna taking Guichabu down with him in the epitome of, of I'm going down and you're coming down with me. The end sig equalizing up the stocks. Guichabu had a chance to build a lead there, and Luna just completely denied it. And now once again we're on at this guitar's mirror match. Guichabu finding a read going a bit far with the say doesn't get punished for his return back to stage. A small damage lead made by Gichibu starting to build up a little bit more. Side light into the D light doesn't catch the dodge, but oh, a lot of damage. Gets a read. Oh my god! He held days. it. He, he held it. He puts himself in great finals with that. With that. Are you insane? Oh my days. He actually just hit Luna with the Brawlhalla IQ test by holding that Sig, charging it for a second. Luna could have dodged out of it, but obviously it's a signature you don't expect to be able to dodge out of a SIG. And so, Guichabu just optimizing the damage, getting as much damage as possible with that end SIG and manages to secure, as you said, the 3-0 victory over Luna, which is, that's big. I mean, Guichabu, a very 